Hey everybody, this is the first video in the sixth and final video of my uh, Before We Go blog batch. Uh, once again, I am not the sole arbiter of which books move forward and which books do not, as I've mentioned previously. At least one book that I personally didn't care much for um, has already had at least two other people decide they want it to be a semi-finalist, so it will be. Uh, so. Um, I really am not lying when I say that uh, I'm not the sole arbiter here. All right, let's go ahead and get right to the uh, first book. This is the sixth video, so you guys have all heard the spiel already. The first book is called World Breaker by Becca Lee Gardner. Um, this book is an epic fantasy. Um, I'm going to talk real quick, try not to make this video go too long, but this book is a, uh, a single book by the author in a much wider series called The Eldrus Legacy. Uh, it apparently has uh, multiple different authors. There's four primary authors who I guess are writing um, a book set in uh, each of the four continents on the world of Eldros. And then um, there are other authors who include this uh, Becca Lee Gardner who are writing like maybe single books, possibly more. Um, I have to be honest, I haven't like spent a ton of time researching it yet. I started reading the book, you know, just a couple hours ago. And then um, I was intrigued, so I looked into the rest of it. Uh, now, getting into this book itself, um, it um, follows um, a couple of characters. One who's definitely the um, the main character for sure. Her name is Kasara. Uh, she's uh, got some magical powers. It looks like dark magic. She's got a twin brother who um, has what the family legacy is, is like light magic. Um, and so uh, they were off, basically they're like pirates at this point. Uh, her brother got hurt at the beginning, or before the book actually starts, and they go to this like pirate den basically to uh, try to get him healed, end up uh, getting caught up in politics of the city, and the story moves forward. Um, now, in terms of like this one itself, I am so far, I think I'm a fan of this book, um, but... I'm not 100% certain that I would recommend it as a semi-finalist because you get dumped right into things like very quickly. Um, it feels like um, I should have read other books in this series to kind of understand what's going on. But I believe that this one is, you know, a completely a standalone. Uh, these characters aren't anywhere else as far as I'm aware of. And so I think we just get thrown into things running. I'm not sure that's the greatest thing um, as far as a competition goes in terms of, you know, getting um, people to want to wanna read it and to, to enjoy it and have it, you know, score well. But I am intrigued enough and I do like the book enough that I'm going to continue reading it. And at some point I will absolutely be looking into, you know, this whole wider series and figure out what's going on with all of that. Um, once again, World Breaker, uh, the, a, a book in the Eldris Legacy series, which has multiple authors uh, by Becca Lee Gardner is this one. Um, epic fantasy. Uh, there's multiple races. The whole backstory, I guess, is that uh, 2,000 years ago, um, the five mortal races were um, basically slaves to a race of magical giants. They overthrew them and uh, killed like half of them. The other half disappeared, and I guess they are now getting ready at some point to come back, is what my uh, theory is. That's kind of what the blog, you know, the, the reviews say. Um, so a uh, bigger, wider thing, you might want to look into both this one and um, ones by the other uh, authors in the Eldris Legacy. All right, let's go ahead and get to the next one. Uh, just four more. Hey, everybody. The next book in this final batch is A Night of the Burnt Man by Emmanuel Akeo. Uh, has a single point of view character book with uh, our MC being uh, named Meka, M-E-K-A. He is a soldier and uh, things kind of felt like really weird and chaotic, but basically uh, the general storyline is that um, this land is controlled by different gods. Um, right off the bat, he's supposed to be going to uh, a tower to protect a priest um the empire that he's a part of thinks that there's going to be an attack as soon as he gets there basically that attack happens um he ends up having to go off uh and and uh, do some things with some other uh people he's got magical armor um you know abilities that seem to be given by the gods um make a, he his wife is pregnant um when this first uh, night happens uh, he's told by one of the priests that his you know child is about to be born uh, they are born with some powers that are dangerous to the gods and uh, are supposed to be killed um make chooses not to do that 
and ends up having to leave the city that he uh, loves. Um, the deal with this book is that, um, you know, I wasn't able to find any info really about the author. There's no Goodreads bio. Um, there's nothing on Amazon. Uh, even their social media, if I even have the right person, uh, is basically blank. Um, I don't know um, where um, Akeo is from, but I, I felt like this book um, was definitely written by somebody who uh, English isn't their first language, or if it is, it, it's, it's spoken differently. Um, just the prose felt really um, off to me. Uh, definitely not like AI or anything like that, but just it, like the sentence structure and some th some of the ways that, you know, phrases were, were made or words were used just wasn't quite in the order um, that I was expecting. And it just felt like at times like it was tough for me to read because of the prose. Um, it was consistent, but it just it just didn't um, it just didn't quite read right to me. So basically, I, I just, you know, because of that, I, I had a really tough time ever getting into uh, that movie in my mind or really getting into the story. And um, as a result, I won't be recommending um, it to move forward. And I don't plan on, you know, continuing to read past that 20%. All right, uh, let's go ahead and get on to the next book and um, we'll uh, see how she goes. Thanks. All righty, so we are down to our final few of the original 20%. Uh, this book is called The Dream Thief. It's by Bella Dunn. It is a, an urban fantasy, romanticy style novel. Um, we have two point of view characters, the first of which is named Brun or Brun, B R U N. He is 500 years old. He's, I think he's it's explained that he's human, but he was granted like fey magic and long life. Uh, he's, like I said, he's over 500 years old now. The second character is named Elizabeth. She is a descendant of the Fey Woman who um, gave uh, Brune his powers. Uh, they're the Dream Thief, which is the title of the book, seems to be maybe another Fey who um, kills other Fey. I'm not quite sure exactly like what bad thing they do in the first 20% aside from kill other Fey, because in the initial opening scene, it makes it seem like him killing uh, these other fae mean that like bad things for the world are going to happen but uh, the story is set 250 years after that happened so I'm not actually certain like what bad you know like why the dream thief is a problem in modern day uh, I guess maybe if I read the whole thing then I'd figure it out um, but you don't in the first 20 percent unless I just miss something um, Elizabeth is cl uh, just 24 years old. Uh, she's just living a normal life. She just graduated from medical school at Oxford when she finds out that she is going to inherit the estate that that Fay woman had uh, had been um, in charge of before she dies at the beginning of the book. Um, it turns out that uh, Elizabeth is a spitting image of her, um, according to Brune, and a big painting that's in the, the manor house that she inherits. Um, that's about where we get in terms of that first 20%. The book at the beginning does say that there will be sex scenes, so I'm assuming that's going to be between Brune and Elizabeth based off of their immediate sexual tension. Uh, a little creepy to me that he's 500 years old and she's 24. Uh, talk about uh, quite the age gap there. But um, as far as, you know, romance isn't necessarily my thing. Uh, I did love Rain and Ruin, one of the, the other uh, previous winners of Spiffbo. But uh, this book is not Rain and Ruin. Um, my biggest issue with this one actually is that I felt like the editing was, was pretty bad. We're a little far into the game, in my opinion, to be putting out books like this where uh, there was a lot of issues where like words were wrong even, not just like issues with like, um, not just issues with commas and sentence structure or something like that. There's a, an example of like in like a five page span we had chapped used instead of chipped, and then unobtainable is used instead of unbearable. Um, there's at least like four or five examples of that in in the first. I'm ten percent actually. It might have uh, settled down after that, but I just I wasn't really particularly impressed with uh, with you know those kind of editing issues in a book that's in a competition. Uh, won't be recommending this one to move forward, or I don't have any plans on you know finishing reading it. Um, I know it's not my genre, but that's not really where my issues are with the book at the moment. So um, we'll carry on and get the last two books. Thanks. 
Hey everybody, book number 29, we're getting close. Uh, on my list is Breaker of Fates by Vela Denard and Micah Inandria, I-A-N-N-A-N-D-R-E-A. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, it is a queer um, epic fantasy, um, quite a few uh, fantasy races. Uh, some of them are your, like your typical Dungeons and Dragons style. Uh, some of them are ones that um, I'm not super familiar with, but that doesn't mean they're not, you know, other Dungeons and Dragons uh, inspired characters or inspired Dungeons and Dragons inspired races. Um, the main plot line, a um, uh, dozen years or so, but in the uh, past, a undead dragon wiped out um, like their main city in this valley. Now, there's still five other cities that were like the holy city where the gods were. Uh, they seem to have been um, affected in some way by this undead dragon's attack, and they're not around at the moment. Uh, that made all of the clans that are um, in the area start fighting each other. Um, our main characters are um, a woman named Kiva. She's a warlord now. She started basically her own clan, started incorporating little clans and uh, doing some fighting to try to like protect some people. Uh, then the other main character um, is Roderick. He is um, like a Robin Hood style thief, basically uh, trying to keep refugees who don't want to join any of the other clans uh, safe, fed and stuff like that. Uh, Kiva and Roderick were very good friends before the calamity. And now, obviously, they are uh, fighting against each other. Um, Kiva seems to think that Roderick betrayed her. And he's also not very well liked because his dad is the one that is thought to have maybe uh, been the one that allowed the that undead dragon to attack the sacred city. So, um, the, uh, there, you know, are two basically um, main characters that we get introduced first. Uh, they, and the reason why this is a queer-inspired book... Um, is that they are both dating uh, the same person um, named Mateo. Uh, seem to be transgendered. Um, I, um, Mateo seems to be transgendered and is polyamorous. Uh, Roderick and Kiva both know that Mateo is dating other people as well. That's not the issue. They don't realize that they're the person, the other person that Mateo is dating. Obviously, they hate each other now. And Kiva has actually been trying to capture Roderick um, to stop him from um, raiding her caravans. So, um, very, very involved, first 20%. Um, this one, um, we're dealing with a world where uh, gender identity is very much more fluid with a lot of people. Sexuality is not an issue. Um, you know, there's, I'm sure there's plenty of uh, straight people as well, but there are plenty of gay and lesbian characters. So if that's something that uh, you want in your fantasy, um, then, you know, this is definitely a book for you. Um, <laughs> the authors uh, have what felt like a 15 page intro talking about their own journey, um, you know, why they wrote the book, uh, their inspirations, all that fun stuff. Um, I get it, you know, you want to talk about that stuff. But then they also like were like, oh, hey, don't get on me about having uh, swords and indoor plumbing and things like that. Felt like it went a little bit too long. Um, but once I got past that and got over my minor annoyance at that, uh, then I got into it. That the book's really well written. Uh, I very much enjoyed the world. The world building is great. I'm an epic fantasy fan, and uh, I liked that. I'm not sure that I'm going to love the... Uh, relationship being such a big part of things i understand like that is part of the purpose of this book right um but i generally don't care whether they're straight or gay relationships to have uh, a relationship be the the primary thing about the book but um i love the world building i thought that the the lore behind it uh roderick and kiva are cool characters so i'll definitely be continuing to read in this I have no idea whether I'm going to recommend it as a semi-finalist yet, but I do plan on reading past that 20%. Um, it's about a 600-page book, so it's definitely on the longer side, uh, maybe 550, but um, one of the longer books in the competition for our group. We got a lot of shorter ones in this one. So um, it made the cut. Um, I think right now um, there will be something like seven books that, I'll, that I plan on currently reading all the way through, and then we'll see um, how we go from there. All right, on to book 30. All right, everybody, uh, we finally did it. I made it all the way through all 30 books. Uh, before I talk about this 30th book, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about uh, the whole competition as a whole for me. Um, this is the first time I've ever read all 30 books in a batch, 
and um, it was something that I, uh, you know, very much enjoyed. Um, as far as our batch of books goes, we had a fair number of like uh, YA, um, especially like paranormal, uh, you know, young romance style books. We had uh, several um, LGBTQ um, protagonist books as well. And then we also had um, at least a few books that, that had that funny, absurd, like Terry Pratchett inspired um, feel to them. Uh, the one thing I am disappointed about is we had no grimdark novels, and I am primarily a grimdark reader. Uh, it would have been nice to have had, uh, you know, some of those grimdark novels, but I guess uh, it did take away, uh, uh, you know, books having a uh, um, just innate um, benefit or, um, you know, for being the, my favorite genre. Um, all that being said, uh, I enjoyed a lot of the books in the batch. Um, I, um, a couple of my favorite books were ones I certainly wouldn't have expected. Uh, another one of those uh, very adult uh, paranormal uh, romance feeling books was uh, one of my favorites. Um, I also enjoyed um, a couple of the just the regular uh, like science fantasy. We had um, several of those that I wasn't expecting and I enjoyed those as well. Uh, I've got about five or six books that I plan on um, personally reading the full books of before we get into um, any books that will be recommended as semi-finalists by the rest of the group. Uh, all right, now that I got that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the final book, uh, which was Wolves Running by Deborah Jarvis. It is a paranormal urban fantasy, definitely some romance uh, brewing and uh, more of a YA bent as well. Um, the, the situation in the world is we're dealing with like modern day Earth. Uh, just before the start of the book, um, a group of people who were shifters uh, came out to the wider world and uh, let everybody know that there are shifters. There seem to be a bunch of different types of shifters, uh, wolves, bears, um, ravens, uh, corbies as they're called, uh, otters are mentioned. I mean, it, it seems like basically anything might potentially be able to be a shifter. So maybe anything can. Uh, there seem to be a fair number of people who are shifters, but it's still a pretty, you know, low percentage of the population. Um, and as a whole, you know, the shifter community is trying to have to deal with uh, what it's like to be out into the wider world now. Um, our main character in this one, her name is Sasha. She's 27. She's a shifter. Her boyfriend is not a shifter, and he has uh, stated some things that he's not a big fan of shifters in general. Uh, seems pretty prejudiced, but otherwise, he seems like a nice guy. Um, and uh, her best friend, who she actually met when he was a senior in high school while she was student teaching, uh, completely platonic to start off with, but by 20%, it's pretty obvious that it's going to be more than platonic. Uh, at this point, it's like 10 years later, so, you know, nothing too too bad there. But he was uh, thought to just be a human until suddenly he shifts. Apparently, um, most people start shifting around puberty, but it can be as late as like your mid-30s or something even later, maybe. Um this, uh, when he shifts, um, she ends up taking him home to her family and, uh, they get to know each other and, you know, we basically get to learn about, um, like at least a wolf pack, right? They're, they're, they're wolf shifters and, um, how like that society works and everything. Um, all in all, this was a really well-written book. Um, I had no problems getting to my 20%, but it is, uh, definitely a, uh, an example of that book that, um, I am not the uh, audience. I do not particularly care for, um, you know, romance novels in general. I don't really care all that much for uh, urban fantasy, paranormal style, um, especially not with a YA bent to it. Um, but uh, it's another one of those things where um, this is the, a great book. I, I feel like if you like that kind of stuff, then it's, you know, certainly a book that you um, would probably enjoy. It looks like it's the first book in a series. There are several other books out. Uh, so, you know, if, if that sounds like something that you're interested in, uh, I thought the writing was great. Uh, certainly not my style. I don't plan to continue to read it. Um, but, and once again, um, it's just going to depend. If someone else wants to uh, nominate it, I'll finish reading it. And I'm sure that it's just fine. I'm not going to stand in anybody's way. Um, but it's not going to be a nomination on my part just because of that, right? Uh, that's part of the whole thing with this competition. Um, I read all, you know, 20%. I, I read 20% of all 30 books, but um, that doesn't necessarily mean that um, even if a book is good, it's for me. And so, um, you know, there's very few books so far that I've just read and thought that I'm going to make an automatic cut on. 
or recommend that. And this, you know, is going to be in that whole uh, batch of books that um, I thought were, you know, just fine written, but they weren't for me. And so if someone else wants to nominate them, then that's great. Um, here, shortly after this video airs, we'll start having regular reviews out for the entire blog. They'll all go on the blog and um, they will be um, you know, we'll have cuts, we'll have semi-finalists, uh, just full full reviews and things like that that are all written. I'm not much of a, a written uh, review kind of person, um, but, you know, we'll have some for this. All right, hope you guys all enjoyed all these videos, um, and, you know, you got to see all 30 of our books and decide if some of them are for you or not, and um, we'll carry on and, you know, do the full reviews, get semi-finalists and finalists. Thanks!